Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. For planning purposes, it's important to understand not only the difference between how Exchange 2003 routes email versus Exchange 2010, but how the routing is going to work when you have both Exchange 2003 servers and Exchange 2010 servers in your environment. So this would be during the migration process. We need to have mailboxes on Exchange 2003 and mailboxes on Exchange 2010 and have email go between our two Exchange 2003 and Exchange 2010 servers. Or if we have multiple Exchange 2003 and Exchange 2010 servers, we need email to flow back and forth. So Exchange 2003 uses routing groups, and it uses link state updates to help determine the best route to send email. It also uses routing group connectors to send email back and forth between routing groups. Now Exchange 2010 does not use routing groups at all. It actually uses least cost routing, and it uses Active Directory sites and services to determine the cost of the routes between the sites. So because Exchange 2010 doesn't use routing groups, in order for mail to pass back and forth between our Exchange 2003 and Exchange 2010 servers, during the Exchange 2010 installation process, a routing group is created for all of our Exchange 2010 servers. And all of our Exchange 2010 servers are going to be put in it. And it's the DWBGZ MFD01QNBJR routing group. So if we have a lot of sites and a lot of Exchange servers, it's important to know that all of our Exchange 2010 servers are going to be put into this one routing group. And we can't move them out of that routing group into another routing group to form an efficient Exchange 2003 to Exchange 2010 routing topology. So if again if we have a lot of sites and serve a lot of sites and a lot of exchange servers then we most likely will have an inefficient routing topology and that's one reason why we want to plan it appropriately and decide which exchange 2010 servers we want to deploy or which sites we want to deploy to first. Now if we only have one site or two sites the inefficiency probably won't matter too much. Because during the Exchange 2010 installation, a routing group connector is actually created between our Exchange 2010 routing group and another Exchange 2003 routing group. And that's how email is going to be passed back and forth between our Exchange 2010 servers and our Exchange 2003 servers, is that routing group connector. And we'll actually see all of this in coming movies. But if we do have a lots, of, lots of sites and lots of exchange servers, we can actually create multiple routing group connectors between our Exchange 2010 routing group and maybe other Exchange 2003 routing groups using the new dash routing group connector commandlet. And this will not only be good to help the efficiency of email routing, but it also gives us some redundancy. One thing to note that before we go to install Exchange 2010, we want to make sure that all of our Exchange 2000 routing groups have at least one connector to another routing group. And it, most likely we're going to have this. Otherwise, you know, uh, email routing wouldn't work properly with our Exchange 2003 servers. But we do want to double check that we do have this.